Welcome back, everyone, to another exciting episode of Pig's Ear in Review. The only, one of the only shows where we're actually talking about the things that we're playing, things that we're watching, and even some things that we're reading, as we saw last week. So my name is My Stuff, and I'm always uh, joined by Riku Rose here. So this week, we got some fun topics as well. We got Halo, the TV series. I'm going to do a bit of a Silent Hill kind of compilation sort of discussion, uh, given the rumors of the new ones coming out. Then we got one of the most unique movie names I've seen in a while, The Unbearable Weight of Massive Talent with Nick Cage. And then I'm going to talk about a manga I've been reading for a little while, uh, a little uh, small one called Ber- Berserk. Maybe you've heard of it, maybe not. But I'll I've heard that. of it. <laughs> <laughs> may, yeah, you may have seen it here here and there a little bit. Uh, but uh, before going into that, though, how you been the last week? Yeah, not bad, not bad. Uh, I've got a uh, bit of a sore throat at the moment, so you're like, oh, oh, no. okay, that, I, I've got COVID, but all the tests say no, yeah, I got it. <laughs> nice. So now I'm just sitting here wondering what I've got and who I've been there. <laughs> <laughs> That's always the uh, issue lately, but hopefully you're feeling better as well. Remember oh. when we used to just get sick? And yeah, remember okay. the good old days when we just yeah. had sore throats and noses and we didn't uh, think we were going to die? Yeah, yeah, I do remember that. What, what a How great have you been? <laughs> oh, not bad, not bad. In addition to the stuff we're going to talk about today, I've also been watching, finally catching up on TV shows over the last uh, week or so that I've been meaning to for a little while now. But I'm usually what I've been doing lately, especially because every streaming service under the sun now has every different show. I'll kind of wait for the episodes to build up and then just watch them rather than just yeah. do like a month, you know, like a month by month, keep paying them. So... I will say, though, I do normally subscribe to HBO Max, which has been nice. So I've been watching Barry, and I know you have as well. Um, Better Call Saul. And then uh, what else? Might I want? Oh, yeah, Our Flag Means Death, which all of those we'll probably talk about in some upcoming episodes. But those are going on right now, which are all really good as well. So, Well, I, I wouldn't have signed up for Paramount Plus personally. <laughs> there weren't a lot on it. it was, I, I was interested in but I got it for free with my TV mm-hmm. for two years. Two free. years? Yeah, well, they offered a, a hundred dollar gift card. I uh-huh. said you can either do the five dollar a month option or the ten dollar a month option with no ads. Huh? So I went with the ad option and got it for two yeah. years. So oh, that's not bad. And not uh, bad. the biggest show on Paramount Plus right now is Halo. How dare you? <laughs> it's true. They they came out the other day and they were like, "Oh, you know, it's our most successful show." Uh, what's your history with Halo? Yeah, so uh, I've played, uh, let's see, Halo 1, 2, 3, ODST, and Reach. So I have not played 4, 5, or Infinite yet. And then I know there's like books and stuff, and I haven't done any of that. So I'm not like a a super fan by any means, but I've played a good chunk of the older quote-unquote games. I think we have done exactly the same then, because I stopped. uh, I never played 4. Okay. I played one the free Reach ODST. Okay. Um, so I was a bit worried at first when the show came out because I was like, I don't really know the story that way that yeah. well. It's been about ten years since Reach, probably. I so, think so. My, my memory of the story is also really hazy. Like I remember, like, oh yeah, there's the blue lady and there's the ring, <laughs> <laughs> and, some aliens, probably. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, 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 like, they look like really overgrown lizard people. Um, so I went into this. I Googled, like, is it related to the games mm-hmm. or anything? Apparently, it's in the silver timeline because everything needs its own name now rather mm-hmm. than just saying, no, it's not related to the exactly. games. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Um, I, this mo- they were trying to make a movie with Peter Jackson back in the day. Yeah, this thing's been going on for a long time in some form, like changing directors, right, and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, I read some article that like it's gone through like 150 scripts, <laughs> right? Right, which is ridiculous because you would think then they'd be able to make it good. <laughs> okay, okay, um, go on. <laughs> what do you think of when you think of Halo? 
I mean, Master Chief, of course. He's trying yeah. to save some world from being destroyed and aliens taking over. Um, and I know there is a longer history, especially the recent games. I think they go more back into the history a little bit with like well, let, other let me, species. Let me rephrase this. Then. If me and you were sitting in a boardroom at Paramount headquarters, yeah, what are the things people are going to want to see in a Halo like a show or a movie? Yeah, okay, so once again, Master Chief, probably a warthog, uh, like, you know, the f- car that they're driving, or mm-hmm. whatever you want to call it, Cortana, the the blue lady, uh, as you call her. <laughs> um, I mean, some of the, like, the common aliens, like the Elite, or the Flood, or whatever they're called. I mean, granted, I'm once again thinking yeah. of those older Halo games, but I mean, those are the ones, I mean, a Halo, the, the freaking Halo, like, you planet. Get, you, get, you get all of that stuff. Okay. okay. What kind of genre should we make it? rom-com <laughs> how about a deep commentary on hiring children to become war like soldiers really yeah <laughs> okay you, all right it opened up the first episode and there's these kids playing in the woods and they're like don't go that far ha, ha, ha. oh uh-huh. come on like Quan, come with us and I'm like, yeah. wow, this seems like a really bad like sci-fi show, or like one of those shows that like get cancelled on Fox after one season. Right. Um, and then the aliens appear. It's really bad CG. And really? Then, didn't like, I read some? Well, didn't I read an article somewhere saying they spent like ten million an episode or something stupid? I, I don't know where this budget went. It's the most <laughs> expensive, cheap-looking show ever. Right. Okay. Because the aliens turn up, really bad CG. Master Chief turns up with a few Spartan, shoots them, right? Mm -hmm. It's all right. Sequence, they try to be really heavy-handed with like that. Oh, like it's first person. Oh, you hear the shield come up, right? Okay. They try really hard with that. Okay, it's good. Uh, They then spend five episodes just talking in rooms. (laughs) About what? (laughs) Oh, like, the, you got to touch the artifact because I saw things. Okay, touch the artifact. Don't touch it. It's it's hurting you. Okay, I won't touch it. And then an episode later, he goes, I need to touch it again. And they go, I just can't, just can't help. He goes, I need the visions again. And they go, you know what happened last time you touched it. It hurt you. And I know, but it's yeah, worth it. They go, okay, touch it. He touches it. They go, don't do that again because you just got hurt again. Okay, so are these like four year olds? Like, what are they doing? <laughs> but that's it. He does not shoot a gun between the first five minutes of episode one and the last five minutes of episode five. Huh. Right. Okay. It is literally like five rooms that people just talk in. And it is just about like political espionage and like people backstabbing people. Are the good guys really the good guys? But it's also not compelling in any way whatsoever. My favorite <laughs> yeah, was, part of Game of Thrones, yeah. No, I was going to say, because like, that type of thing could be interesting, given the right context, or if that's what you're expecting. Mm-hmm. But to your point, if that's not what people are yeah. kind of hoping to get out of a Halo show, then it just seems super weird. Yeah, I mean, I'm not the biggest Halo fan, as we said earlier, but I would think you want like action. The thing that's cool about Master Chief is he's a one-man army that goes into the suicide missions and he comes right. out of it. Uh, there's none of that. None of that whatsoever. <laughs> of maybe, no, maybe the very last episode there's a little bit of that. But for the most part, it's trying to make you care about these characters that have no redeeming features. No mm-hmm. one cracks a smile for the entire nine episodes. Mm-hmm. People become friends and fall out and become friends again. And you're like, why do you like them? They're a dick. They're yeah. boring. They have no personality whatsoever outside of the dialogue they are saying. Mm-hmm. It just is a very bland and boring show. And apparently the person who like is the showrunner was very proud of the fact they've never played the games. I saw that article is- too. And I'm like, even <laughs> if that was the case, don't say that. Cause that is yeah, immediately, yeah, just don't even mention it. Be- you could just be like, yeah. Oh, we took inspiration or whatever. But the fact that, yeah, he said that is like, that just seems to have set it up for failure from the get go. <laughs> yeah. It's like, shut up. Don't say it. <laughs> don't say it. 
all you now because all people are going to do is go yeah you can tell right if people say they like it then you can say it right yeah and it's it's like i'm it's i don't know what the motivation was to have that kind of approach i, I mean i lit like why even adapt it as or sorry <laughs> why even call it halo then at that point just make it some other sci-fi show. Because they want to make money on property. Right, obviously. clearly. They're launching Paramount Plus and they're like, right, we need Star Trek, we need a big light IP. Because I was actually looking through Star, uh, Paramount Plus and I was like, you know, they're trying to cover every market here. Yeah. You know, you got Star Trek, which is, you know, your sort of, nowadays it's your nerd, your nerd who is into the old school sci-fi. Yeah. You got your Halo, which is more your modern sci-fi. Right. They have like Jackass, which is your comedy. They have um, they had some sort of like Gossip Girl type show type thing mm -hmm. for the younger ladies or like early twenties women. You know, yeah. they have like the Rugrats and SpongeBob stuff. So I think they've just been like, right, we need a property that we can put in this hub. Mm -hmm. So old school nerd, speaking of which, uh, my t-shirt, Carlton, I was trying to figure <laughs> out a way of how we can relate my t-shirt back to this conversation since I'm trying to w have themed t-shirts for episodes. So thank you for relaying that. So yes, old school nerd here, of course. <laughs> but Well, the best, the best part of the entire show was my wife walked in when Master Chief was on the screen and went, is he Halo? <laughs> he's, the, he's the Halo. <laughs> Yeah, it's just like, like even for me, who has played the old Halo games, and I would be kind of interested just hearing you talk about it, and also just what I've already heard about it through articles and stuff. I'm like, nothing about this makes me want to watch it. Well, uh, so I, I'm going to give you three things here, and I want you to tell me which is the lie. Okay. Okay. He discovers his name is John Halo. <laughs> okay. Okay. Master Chief has sex in front of the woman who raised him. I took a weird turn, but all right. Right. Okay. okay. Or they have a rave in an asteroid. You said one of those is a lie. <laughs> one of those is a lie. I'm going to guess the first one, and his last name is not Halo. <laughs> that is correct. <laughs> okay. Because <laughs> that would be too on the nose. But my, really, yeah. those other ones are true. Hmm. Yeah, yeah. Uh, he also just never has his helmet on. Oh, yeah, because obviously in the games, you never see his face. But in this one, they're no. like, nah, fuck that. <laughs> no, he takes it off in the first episode, and it's like a big reveal, but it's not because it's the first episode. Yeah, it's like they try to make it like when Darth Vader took off the helmet right. in like episode six, and you're like, "Oh, that's what he looks like under there." But you're like, "Well, I imagine it's just a guy." Like, yeah, and it's just like, a, "What are you?" It's not even. <laughs> it's not even like Matt Damon's under there, and you go, "Oh, they got Matt Damon!" Like, it was just the right. actor I've never heard of. Yeah, and like even regardless of who it is, it sounds like there's no build up. Like, it's almost like they knew in like the real world we haven't seen his face, and it's there's been build up to this show. But in the show, it's the first episode, so it doesn't. There's no build up. It doesn't matter. He's he's on the spaceship in one episode, and they're getting off to go on a planet. He puts his helmet on. They walk down the ramp, and he takes the helmet off. And I'm like, what is this fucking scary ramp? <laughs> Yeah, like, he, look, he could fall and get hurt, so, he's, come he's on. He needs it for his head. Yeah. Oh, um, my God. I, I, I'm giving it a thumbs down. Uh, it's really, really boring. It's not, like, awful, awful. It's not like um, what those, like, really cheap knockoff movies they do. You know, the Asylum type things? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's not that bad. It's not awful, 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 but it's just not fun to watch it's really it's just mediocre you're, watch, you're just well not even mediocre you're just watching it because it's halo and you're expecting it okay. to be good because it's a big property yeah mm -hmm. but overall do, do, it's not fun do they leave it open for like another season or something or oh yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. but still gotta go to halo <laughs> oh, of course, of course. Yeah, how how could I be naive here? Yeah. Uh, I'm just curious though if they've even announced if they are or aren't doing anything. Yeah, I feel they, like it would. They've announced. They've announced the new season. 
because it's been like oh. so huge on Paramount Plus. Yeah, they announced it before the first episode aired. Oh, I didn't realize that. Okay, uh, wow. Yeah. I'm just, I'm shocked because I mean, I, I don't think you're alone in, in your sentiment about the show. I think a decent amount of people. No. Well, I guess it's one of those situations though. Like, if you've played the games, then yeah, you're probably going to be like, "What the hell is this?" But maybe for people who haven't, it's maybe more forgiving, I guess, and people are cool with it. Uh, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know who the show's for. It's not for fans of the game. It's not for newcomers um, because there's just nothing to grip anyone. Yeah. Oh, my God. Yep. That's another one of those situations where they adapt it thinking they're going to please everyone, and then they just confuse more people than anything. <laughs> yeah. Oh, but man. All right. Good to know. Thumbs down. Warrant, warrant. <laughs> Sucks. <laughs> all right. So... Next up, I'm going to talk about Silent Hill. And so there are some rumors recently that have come out, which I'll kind of tack on to the end. But that kind of prompted me to, to have this topic because I was trying to think of when it would be a good one time to do it. Because it's something I did technically towards the end of last year and earlier this year. But um, now is as good as time as any, given the rumors. So pretty much growing up, I played a couple of the earlier Silent Hill games, but I didn't really play too many of them or even complete a lot of them it was more like mm -hmm. oh i play them for a couple hours and then i usually just got frustrated and i was like all right i'm, I'm gonna put this shit down so i don't know have you ever played any of the silent hill games or no so when like the second and third one they did the hd collection on like the mm -hmm. 360 and the ps3 i was like mm -hmm. oh okay this is like a series i missed i was a little too young for it when it came out yeah so i was like oh okay i'll go back and i got like the first one on the ps3 i guess one classics I played it for about 40 minutes and I died like miles away from like when I saved it. Mm -hmm. And it was really like just frustrating the control. And I was like, oh, yeah. I'm, just, I'm not feeling it. I'm not feeling it. And I just never went back. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's understandable. It's, the earlier games, well, really, yeah, probably all of them, I guess, are very much products of their time in terms of how they were made. And they're definitely in those old style tank controls and, um, some of them have like a the pterodactyl attack to me, and I was like just trying to like <laughs> punch it, <laughs> right? And you just like can't like hit it correctly, yeah. and you're like moving around, uh, yeah. And uh. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, exactly. So, I think though, what most people, of course, like about them is more the atmosphere and like the music and stuff like that. And, but the gameplay does take getting used to, kind of like the old Resident Evil games as well. So, um, but I finally wanted to play through them, and I I'll do a as quick of an overview as I can, but essentially the best way to talk about these games is the first four games and the second four games, because the first four games are made for sure. The first three are made by the, like the core team silent, which was at Konami. And then the fourth one, I believe mostly is, it could be the same group, but I think there may have been a little bit of changeover at that point when they were starting to kind of move away to other projects. But essentially the first four games are kind of like the same core group. Um, the first three games are kind of dealing with the same like family of characters. And the fourth one is kind of a new guy in a new setting. So before going on to those other four, I'll talk about those first. So, just, I mean, you could watch all sorts of retrospective videos, so I'm not going to go into, like, lore and stuff like that or anything ridiculous, but, like, if, if they're a just cool games. a pyramid on his head. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's all, honestly, you really need to know. He's going to yeah. kill you. There's some zombies and weird shit walking around. Or not zombies, per se, but, like, weird infected characters. But I, I think the reason, from a story perspective, they're so fun. It's They're very much... Um, psychological about kind of blurring between realities and like afterlife and like how like you're going in between different worlds and and it's just it's just weird and eerie and creepy and then as a fun fact kind of a, as a slight side tangent uh i forget where i read this but basically the creator of silent hill said that one of the biggest inspirations for them was actually the movie jacob's ladder have you ever seen that movie no i haven't so incredible movie with Tim Robbins from like 1990, um, basically about like a Vietnam War vet who's coming back and is trying to like deal with PTSD, but he starts seeing like really weird visions and it's like really grimy and stuff. And so if you watch that now, you can very clearly see where Silent Hill took its inspiration. And this came out like five or six years before the first one. So it's a really great movie, by the way, as a separate note for anyone to watch. But so it's really like gross and grimy and like walls turn bloody and stuff like that. But all, all in all, those first four games, Games are just I, I'm glad I finally played through them I would say probably of those first four 
it's, it's tough, but I, I'd probably say Silent Hill three is probably the best one. And oh, yeah, it connects. I, I, I normally hear two get mentioned as the best one. <sighs> it's usually a toss up between two and three. And I think either it's either one of them you're going to enjoy and you don't necessarily have to play them per se in order like you won't miss a whole lot it's it's nice if you do but i really like three just because the setting i think is a little bit cooler um there's some like more industrial areas and it just i think the music is a little bit eerier and yeah it, i just end up mm -hmm. personally like that one better but you really can't go wrong with any of uh, those first four the, the fourth one i will say like the first one is i'm uh, sorry the first one is a little difficult to recommend just because of how old it is and you'll really feel those clunky like tank controls like you're saying and you're kind of like just wandering mm -hmm. aimlessly sometimes and it's not very clear what you need to do half the time uh but then the fourth one i will say doesn't get as much love as it should and i think that's mainly because they basically took like a completely different character but it's a really cool one where you're like stuck in this room but then you do escape from time to time to go into like this other world or whatever but it's just this really eerie concept of like you can't leave your apartment and you're like trapped and you're kind of slowly undoing the clue uh, uh unraveling clues and stuff like that so so it's like really... COVID lockdown <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly it was it was a precursor to what we're doing dealing with the last two years um so they're really they're really fun games um and there's been, I mean, you can, well, especially with the PlayStation Plus uh, recent, like, classic game stuff, I'm curious if they're going to put any of those Silent Hill games uh, onto that, mm. or if Konami will just get their shit together and just do, like, a proper collection, because the HD collection you mentioned actually is really not good because of how badly they fucked it up, especially on the 360. Yeah, it had yeah. so many bugs that they just decided they, they weren't going to patch it anymore. They just stopped. Like, it was just, it was that bad, yeah. apparently. Um, so if you can play, funny, and as another side tangent as well, if you're able to, on PC, there was a Silent Hill 2 release, and there's been a shit ton of fan mods to essentially make it a proper HD version uh, for, like, the sound and the graphics and, like, little tweaks to the games with bugs, and it, it's awesome. I would highly recommend playing Silent Hill 2 on PC with, like, mods and stuff like that, so... Uh, if, if you're able to, but to be honest, it's an old game. It doesn't take that much to run it. Um, so you should, most people should probably be fine with it. Um, okay. So now the second four games, this is where it gets a little controversial here. So I'm curious of how many people agree. So I guess after the first four, did you even know that there were like four other silent game yeah, games? I, I, I didn't know it was that many necessarily. I know there was the, uh, one on the Wii Shattered Dreams. But Shattered Memories. Mm-hmm. Shattered Memories, okay. And then uh, a little known title named uh, P.T. Uh, <laughs> well, okay, so I'm not counting that one technically, but yes, that one did, of course, yeah. come as well. But yeah, so like after the first four came out, that's when Konami was like, okay, we, we of course want to keep making these, but I think that, that core team was done, essentially. Or I don't know if they were done, or maybe they got reshuffled or whatever happened. But um, then they started essentially giving the properties to other studios like licensing it out and so shattered memories came out which once again out of the other four that is the one i would actually still recommend people playing because it's essentially a retelling of the first silent hill game but not with like guns and action it's almost a purely exploratory uh kind of game where you're wandering and like you have a flashlight and that's like because it was with the wii so you could like point it and do different stuff and i played actually the ps2 version which is fine you just use the joystick instead but it's a really really cool like retelling of the first game but not as painful to play and they even tie in elements mm. from like the second and third game a so is it a so remake or not that's the thing it's it's kind of hard to classify this game it, it's not a re like it's not the same game at all it, it, it it's it's they took the first game and like are literally retelling the story but in a slightly different gameplay style like you're still you like you're in silent hill it's the same main guy but you, it ties in the lore a little bit to one of the later games as well and it's 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 just a different style of game like it, it's not even I, I can't even really call it a remake per se it, it's a yeah i think retelling honestly is the best thing i can call it because it is a truly different game but it's the same story so i thought well that was a, that was a neat way of like trying to revisit the original silent hill but just in a different way so i would actually really recommend playing that game especially i think it's it's a it's worth playing 
Um, then the next three are pretty much all dog shit. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> like the, the, <laughs> I mean honestly like I think they're all equally terrible. They they have some redeeming qualities. Like there's so the next one that came out was Origins which was a prequel to the original one and it was cool. It was kind of like throwback to the original Silent Hill gameplay style as well, but I thought it was clunky and it, it took too like you had to keep going in between the worlds too much and it just was not the most enjoyable. Uh, but then the next two, Homecoming and Downpour, were like the first next gen ones that were released on like PS3 and I think 360, at least for Homecoming. I don't know if Downpour was. And though the combat in those games are the most infuriating combat, like more so than the original Silent Hill. It was awful, like how bad they controlled. But I will say at least Downpour was cool because the story is basically you're like an escaped prison convict and you, on your way to being transported, like your bus crashes from like your prison bus and you have to like escape and you find your way into Silent Hill basically. So like the story was cool. I'll give it that. But Are they're... the US government not looking into this town or anything? <laughs> right. You know, you know, you would think that maybe, hmm, Something's going on here, but I guess technically all these people that find themselves in Silent Hill are, um, you know, they, they kind of get there by accident, so to speak. It's not exactly the easiest place to find, <laughs> and then usually once you're there, it's hard for you to leave as well. So I think uh, that's the thing with Silent Hill. I think the idea of it is really cool, and the first few games definitely take advantage of it in like a really cool story way, but then as the games went along... They kind of like, I don't know. They didn't really know what to do with it. I guess it, it felt like, and they were kind of just yeah. throwing shit at the wall a little bit. <laughs> well, it's what what always gets me when the people are like, "Oh, you know, bring back Banjo Kazooie or mm -hmm. bring back uh, Dino Crisis," and I'm always like, "Not everything needs to go on forever." Yeah, I remember when the train flew away and Back to the Future Three. <laughs> and that was it. That was that was the end. Yeah, that was the end. Sometimes it's okay for things to end, and we create something new. Yes. Granted, yeah. Robert Zemeckis went on to create like Beowulf, but still. <laughs> I think there was technically an animated series, but I don't know if that's canon or not for Back to the Future. <laughs> yeah, but like you know what I mean. It's like <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'm, there's some things I'm just like, just leave it, just leave it. Like one of my favorite games, Final Fantasy X. That game would be better if Ten Two didn't exist. I don't think Ten Two is as bad as some people make it out to be, but <clears throat> that ending I loved. Mm -hmm. Ten Two undoes that ending. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, just end things, end things, leave them alone. Yeah, I mean, it's the same thing as I've talked before, I don't know, on here or wherever with a few people. It was the same thing with X-Files where, like, they had the original run and they honestly, even that took it a little bit too far. But they finally said, oh, okay, we're going to end it. And then they did a movie, okay, fine, whatever. But then they came back for, like, a return to mini seasons, which was like, okay, it's fine. But they, like, really should have just stopped it like they just like they need to know when to let it breathe that was at the beginning die. of the let's bring everything back sort of yeah hit around, I, the around same time like twin peaks yeah yeah around 2015 everything started coming back quite yeah exactly like, i feel like it it got a bit out of hand and we're still seeing it now like right uh, every week you see like oh you know they've just announced a new series of glee or something yeah. <laughs> alf is coming back actually that might be true i think i feel like i may have heard that one but yeah. <laughs> it's it, it's wild right it is gonna eat the cat <laughs> <laughs> he's gonna go on a, he's actually a serial killer in this one um so yeah i mean at that point once those couple of clunkers came out uh, i think konami was finally like all right we're good. Like, we're not going to make any for a little while. And that, of course... Well, and they... I, sorry, I take that back. They had, like, a PS Vita multiplayer spinoff, which I think was shit as well, and some, like, Japan-only mobile games. But those those really don't count. There's really kind of the eight... Sort I of really want to experience a horror game via a card-collecting mobile spinoff. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like, they were clearly milking it as far as they could, and I was like... This is just ridiculous. So then that leads, of course, to what you mentioned, PT, which, which is what Kojima was going to do. And then famously, you know, that got delisted and 
Kojima went his own separate way. And it sucks because that demo is horrifying to just even just watching playthroughs of it is absolutely horrifying. I did play uh, that. I did play that. Okay. And uh, the funniest part was when I got my sister to just play it. <laughs> nice. I know. Mean, oh, yeah, check this out. I turned all the lights off, pulled the curtains. She lasted yeah, about three, to, three goes through mm-hmm. like, the rooms. And then she was like, no, I'm done. Yeah, we're good. We're good. And, and it's crazy how much influence just even that demo had on other games that came out after it, like indie games, some games that literally just tried to replicate it. And then even I would even argue Resident Evil 7 and 8 took mm-hmm. in, like direct inspiration from it as well, because 7 came out not too, too long after. Uh, and then 8, there's definitely a part, one of the bosses that is like it's clearly they took inspiration from it. <laughs> well, there were rumors that like you were going to give them your phone number mm-hmm. and like email address. And they were going to like text and email you when you're like not playing. <laughs> yeah. Like really weird. Which, shit. I think that's like an awesome concept if done wrong. Yeah. I mean, and that's where like, I mean, I know Kojima, I, I, certainly a lot of people love him and I know he does some maybe overly ridiculous shit from time to time, but you got to give him credit for having weird ideas of like yeah. kind of breaking the boundaries a little bit. <laughs> yeah. So we're thinking thumbs up for five, thumbs down for three of them. <laughs> so, well, okay. As far as the ones that I've played, Silent Hill one through four, honestly, I think are all worth playing. I think the personally, like even four, which I know gets shit from time to time, uh, I think all four of those are very much thumbs up in their own right for for different reasons. And then Shattered Memories, I would very much say, uh, is a thumbs up as well. Like I, I personally think it is a really cool experience. Um, actually, really quick fun fact I remembered. In the game, you have a cell phone, and you can use it to call mm-hmm. different people. And if you use your cell phone to call the the actual Konami like help center number, like the customer support, it picks up and like in game and says like Thank you for calling Konami. Like, how can I help you? And then like the main character says, Hey, I'm like I'm trapped in Silent Hill. And then they like just hang up or something like that. It's just really stupid. But, so they kind of like play into that a little bit, which I thought was funny. But then those other three games, Origins, Homecoming, and Downpour, are not that good. I mean, if you mm-hmm. can get your hands on them, give it a shot, but they are not that great. So, And then PT, it, I mean, it's delisted, but if you're able to at least watch playthroughs of it, it's, it's really fun. I think, I think there's ways to do it. Yeah, so you can now. jailbreak it, your PlayStation, and or, you know, in that sense. But and then yeah, the last thing I'll briefly mention is the recent rumors of. I mean, there's that's the thing with Silent Hill. There's always rumors. Like I feel like every freaking month of like, oh, it's coming back, and then obviously nothing happens. But more recently, it seems like a little bit more credibility just because because uh, Konami was issuing DMCA takedowns um and like really commenting on it so apparently the rumor is there's going to be a remake of silent hill 2 which i thought you know that that'd be pretty cool if they did that and then of course a brand new silent hill coming out that i assume is completely unrelated to the pt uh uh, game base or demo and then they even said there might even be another one they made it sound like rumors are saying multiple projects are happening and so the, the, I guess the interesting piece is, I guess the team that did, uh, did, did you ever play the game, the medium that came out like a year or two no, ago? No. So really team, cool yeah. game. Yeah, exactly. Apparently there's rumors they're they're the ones that are working on it, which actually would be cool because the medium, another great game, highly recommend. It's a very silent Hill esque kind of game. And the person who did the music for the first uh, four, f- at least five, I think, Silent Hill games did the music for the medium. So it's very much sounds like Silent Hill kind of music as well. Uh, I highly recommend playing the medium. Really great game. But uh, so yeah, if they're the ones who are going to be making it, I think they're it's in good hands. So, you know, we'll, we'll see how it goes, I guess. So it's been fun. Okay. So I highly recommend checking out Silent Hill games, especially if you like the horror psychological stuff. Um, and yeah, you'll have a good time. Play with the lights off. <laughs> All right, back over to you. So I went to the movie theaters to see the unbearable weight of massive talent. <laughs> Great uh, game. I don't know how much you know about this movie. Mm-mm. Nothing? No, not much. Other than Nick no. Cage. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so Nicolas Cage plays himself. Perfect. Sounds uh, about right. <laughs> and Pedro Pascal plays a uh, super fan who's like a millionaire and uh, he wants Nicolas Cage to come 
to his birthday, like some kind of party, and okay. offers him a million, uh, a million dollars to make an appearance, right? Mm-hmm. Um, it's like, did you ever see Birdman? I've With always Michael wanted Keaton? to. I've heard great things, okay. but I haven't watched it. So this movie sort of broken up into three chunks, which is, from what I think, deliberate based on some of the stuff that happens in the movie. But okay. first, third is like a very serious, like sad look at a guy who just wants to be taken seriously as an actor and isn't anymore. Like it, it it's kind of okay. sad because it, it makes it seem like Nicolas Cage is a bit self-aware of the depiction of himself. Right. But then also the rest of the film kind of makes it seem like he's a superstar that everyone loves. Whereas I feel like many kids now like wouldn't, like, even like most 20 year olds, I don't think would know Nicolas Cage really. Yeah. And that's the, that's the trickiest thing too with Nick Cage is like, he is a good actor. Uh, yeah. he, there's been some really good movies. I don't know. Actually, sorry, really quickly speaking of horror again, not so much Silent Hill, but he was in a movie that came out, I think four or five years ago, maybe a little less than that called Color Out of Space. Have you seen that? No. So it's it's an HP Lovecraft story that was made into a movie. It is one of the most unique horror yeah. movies I've seen in a long time. It's really really cool and it has Nick Cage and he's he's awesome and he does a really good job. So like if you give him the right role, he's an incredible actor. But to your point, I think a lot of people, especially younger kids, they're like who the hell is this guy? They just look at him like he's kind of a, a joke yeah. almost. Yeah, it, it, I I I kind of think the internet was a bit nicer back in the day. But it could be ruthless to people still. And he was one of the first sort of like celebrities, I think, that kind of got memed. Yeah. Uh You know, like back in the, people weren't getting fired every week because they posted sync on Twitter (laughs) back in the day. But people got made fun of in a mean way. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And he he kind of seemed self-aware of that, which is a bit sad. He talks about, I want to quit acting. I'm not getting the roles I want to anymore. Mm-hmm. You know, he, the whole thing is, at the beginning is he finds this role and he really wants it, but no, nope, and he's just getting off of crap. So he's like, I'm done. I'm yeah. Done. Then the middle part of the movie turns into sort of a buddy comedy. <laughs> All right. Between Pedro Pascal, who plays the super fan, and Nick Cage. And those uh-huh. two have great chemistry. Although I think Pedro Pascal could like, star in a movie with a houseplant and have great chemistry because he's just a very <laughs> likable, mm-hmm. friendly guy. Like, I didn't like that last Wonder Woman movie with him in The Bad Guy. So Same. I wouldn't say he was bad in it or unlikable. Yeah, yeah he's he a was good like, actor. I'm, mm-hmm. Yeah. He's just a likable guy. You can imagine, like, wanting to go to Applebee's with him. <laughs> like, Hang out. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, uh, Sure. And he's like a super fan. He's just like, you can tell he's like obsessed with Nick Cage, but like uh, Nick Cage is slowly becoming friendly with him because it's the first guy who, in a while, is obviously showing him some kind of affection and not just bullshitting him. They yeah. hang out, they watch movies like Paddington 2. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> there you go. For those that don't know, he was, uh, I, we try to link a shirt into everything we do, and uh, my stuff. <laughs> Was like maybe we can link Paddington into, into uh, the, this somehow. Uh, mm, there you go. Yeah, and then you did it. The final third becomes an action movie. Okay. I mean, are, is it yeah. literally like chapter markers where it's tr- like no. clearly distinct? Oh, okay. All right. No. So <laughs> the reason why I think it's deliberate is because they talk about writing a movie together, and they keep changing their mind on what kind of movie it's going to be. Oh, uh, okay. Okay. You know, they're talking about like, oh, you know, there should be action in it at the end, and like, but at the beginning, it's like a serious drama and stuff. And honestly, I I enjoyed this movie overall, but I do okay. think it would have been better if they'd stayed more on the drama side, mm-hmm. because the moment it goes action, you're kind of waiting for the movie to end. Got it. Because also, also, it's not the greatest action in the world. You know, he's not driving a bus off a mountain and <laughs> right, it, right. It's, you can tell it's like a lower budget movie. Um, it made me feel really bad for Nick Cage. Well, that's what I'm saying. Like, because it would be one thing if this was a commentary on this 
type of actor, but if he's literally saying he, he is Nick Cage, I mean, that kind of makes it a little bit more direct of a commentary. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, they talk about in Birdman, right? He legit, like, he outright says, like, oh, I could do a Birdman 4 and it'd make a billion dollars, like, opening weekend. But I mm-hmm. want to do this real act in this theater show sort of thing. And you can tell yeah. that's Michael Keaton wanting to do a dramatic role rather than yeah. going back to being Batman, which ironically he is now. <laughs> right. <laughs> it goes, he was really great in the um, the movie where he's the McDonald's uh, founder or whatever it is. The founder. That one. Like, yeah, 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 yeah. Or the founder. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah he yeah, was yeah. great in that. <laughs> yeah, he's a really good actor. And this is it. It's Nicolas Cage as well is like, I think he can do very specific roles. Right. Because even in the, like, there's some parts in this as well where, like, he jokes about, like, or not being a real person. Like, mm-hmm. he's like, they're, they're always like, you're always like acting. Sure. Everything has to be you. And he has a very specific way he acts. Like, there's a few times where he just like switches and he's Nicolas Cage, the actor. <laughs> I mean, do they mention, like, his actual movies in yeah, this yeah, movie yeah. or no? Yeah, oh, okay, yeah. okay. Because, like, uh, they have, like, people watching them and stuff, and there's a woman who comes up to him and is like, I loved Croods too." <laughs> like, <yeah. laughs> he's like, yeah, it's a good movie. Like, <laughs> Oh, my God. Yeah, it's, it's so weird because, like... I don't, but I mean, good for him that he's, I guess, willing to take on those. Like, it's weird because he takes on a lot of different roles, and I don't know if it's, I don't think it's because he's like desperate or needs the money or anything. He, I think he just, apparently did have like big tax problems because oh, apparently, he? oh, okay. he spent a load of money on Superman comics. Uh, <laughs> he, true story, he bought a bunch of European castles. And there was something. Why am I not surprised? Yeah, and they bought something else, and he got like really in debt with the IRS, apparently. But he he said recently that that's like been all resolved now. Oh, okay, okay, good. Okay, so maybe it was then that uh, that was the issue, which is unfortunate. But but you you watch this and you think like, yeah, he's done some crap, right? They Mm -hmm. even make fun of like the whole Wicker Man meme, right? (laughs) The bees, right? Yeah, Yeah, you can tell like. Just through watching this movie, and he sort of said it in interviews as well, is he still tried every single time. Yeah. Mm-hmm. No matter how crap the movie was, he still gave it everything. And I believe Yeah, that. you can tell. You can tell. <laughs> I believe he's not he's not one of those like Stephen Seagal who like apparently insists <laughs> on sitting while acting. <laughs> Man, and that's a guy that has had a, a wide range of interesting movies. <laughs> yeah. No, I, I, I enjoyed this movie. I'd recommend it. I'd give it a thumbs up. I don't think okay. it's like the 90% or whatever it got on Rotten Tomatoes. It's not that good, but Rotten Tomatoes mm-hmm. is... I think everyone's going to enjoy it, which is why it got such a high score with the way yeah. Rotten Tomatoes goes. Yeah. Um, it, it's a good, solid, like, middle of the range, fun movie. Okay. Do you yeah. think... <laughs> So, all right, I do wanted to check. I do want to check this out at some point because I think this is the type of movie I would enjoy. So that's good to know. Then I, I'd probably enjoy it. But I guess really quick on the topic of Nick Cage, uh, given the Marvel's cinematic like multiverse type stuff, Ghost Rider is he coming back? <laughs> I don't know. I did see a thing the other day that apparently a Ghost Rider cameo <laughs> did get cut from uh, Doctor Strange. Oh, man. Really? But there was also there was also a Ghost Rider in that Agents of Shield show. Oh, I didn't watch that. Okay. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, so. Well, one of these I'll be I'm crossing my fingers. Doctor Strange three. He's going to team up with Nick Cage, and not as Ghost Rider, just as Nick Cage. He's going to be the character. He could do, he could do that. <laughs> All right. Well, that's good though. Cool. Good to know. Yeah. I'll have to check so, it out. Thumbs up from me, and then uh, back over to you. All right. So. As I've uh, mentioned before, comics and manga and stuff is definitely something I've uh, I've been reading for quite some time. And once again, my bookshelf is uh, filled multiple bookshelves full of the stuff. But one manga that I started reading last year, so it's one that I've wanted to read for quite some time. And I finally, so the good news, I finally started reading it, but it was because of an unfortunate reason. And so yeah. Berserk here, this is a volume four. I'm actually in the middle of reading volume five. It's upstairs. But 
Uh, so by Kentaro Miura. So he passed away last year in the middle of writing the latest volume, unfortunately, uh, died unexpectedly at like 55 or something like that. So, you know, pretty, relatively speaking, pretty young. So super unfortunate, but uh, this manga has technically been going on in some capacity since 1990. Technically, maybe even a little mm-hmm. bit earlier from when he first started prototyping it or whatever and like trying to shop it around. But essentially, the first official volume was uh, 1990. And over the last 30 years, it's been kind of going, it's never, it was never canceled or anything, but it was just, it w- kind of went on and off over the years where it became a longer and longer over the last five to 10 years between chapters coming out. But it is without question like the pinnacle of dark fantasy kind of manga in the sense of like, like, so like if you want to know the, it's probably the chief inspiration for dark souls in the terms of like what the characters looked like and some of the weapons it's berserk. Like it 100% is berserk. I mean, a lot of things also influenced the souls games and stuff, but like, this is like a dark fantasy of like a knight kind of the way you're talking with master chief being like a one man army where the main character here, his name is guts. He's a one man uh, swordsman kind of knight and th- his main thing is that he has this massive sword think like the buster sword that cloud has but like times five it is like stupidly massive and he just destroys people with it and so th- but what's interesting about this story though is yeah there's there's the medieval the knights and people battling and stuff like that but like i said there's the dark fantasy part of it where you have these just insane uh monsters and like crazy hell demons and like i would even say there's stuff in here that was inspired by like the hellraiser movies as well in terms of what some Mm. of these characters look like and so it's honestly like insane how much this like other artists like in japan and otherwise have said that berserk has inspired them in terms of how they went about their storytelling and stuff like that And it is without question, like, some of the most brutal (laughs) shit that is in this story in terms of, like, the action. Uh, Not so politically correct things that happen. Uh, I'm not going to try to get this video demonetized. Not that we're monetized anyway, so I guess it doesn't matter. But some really, like, you got to have, like, if you have a sensitive stomach in some cases, there's some shit in here that it's, like, even for me, I was like, god damn. Like, (laughs) it it gets nuts, I, I will say. So, I mean, I don't know. When it comes to, like, dark fantasy stuff, like, I know, I I mean, I wouldn't say, like, Game of Thrones per se is, like, a dark fantasy, but, like, in that fantasy realm, I mean, is that, I think that's the type of stuff you would have liked, I mean, since you've told me, like, Game of Thrones, I mean, triangle strategy is, like, more medieval type of stuff as well, right? Yeah, I mean, more what I like with those stuff, though, is more the politics side of it. Okay. Yeah, I like the, the back and forth, why are they doing this, why are they doing that, not necessarily the set in itself. Okay. Okay. That's fair. So then if that's the case, then I think you would still like this potentially because one of the central aspects of the story is there's a guy who's essentially started, who started out as this more or less average dude and not so much the main character, but another character who tries to rise through the ranks and essentially being the, be the king of this kingdom. And the way he has to do it is through, you know, kind of backhanded uh, methods and like tricking and just doing all kinds of crazy shit. And he, he and himself he, and himself is also like a really talented swordsman and stuff like that. But I think what takes it to that next level is that he essentially is trying to become almost like a God character, like even above all of that. And it's just, that's where it gets into that like fantasy. And then they start like, there, there's some uh, parts of this um, of the art that looks like an MC Escher painting, like in terms of like really ridiculous, like alternate dimension stuff going on so i kind of wasn't expecting that per se when i started reading this because i thought and that's honestly why i hadn't read it for the longest time because i was like okay if it's just like a medieval sword fighting and that's it like okay i'm sure it's good but you know maybe not my typical thing but given that it it very much goes into the horror and like fantasy weird shit going on that's where i think it hooked me and so i will the other big thing of course with mira why it took so long for him to make is his drawings like honestly some of them on their own could be paintings like just hung up on a wall there's some of the most yeah detailed... i've seen i've seen some of them it's crazy yeah yeah like i mean i don't even know i can't show that one on camera <laughs> that would have not been a good one 
Um, I'm trying to think of this particular volume maybe has a good one that I could easily show, but either way, like you could look it up online for sure. But there's some of the most insane um, drawings to the point where I actually went to a, it was an anime convention a number of years ago, but they had like a dedicated section of just his art that was like blown up to be like poster size of, of nothing but his panels. And they're like just insanely detailed. So even if you just appreciate good, like drawings and art, you, you would love this too. So, but once again, in terms of the amount, so this is just one volume right here. And this is, I think roughly 700 pages, something like that. So, and these are the deluxe editions as well, which I would highly recommend. So normally, like, they have the smaller ones you would find, like any other manga. But what they did, because this was such an incredible series, is they started bundling them into these deluxe editions where each one of these big ones has three small ones, but then blown up and made better quality and stuff. So it's not one for one. You're getting technically three volumes in each of one of these. And so... I think at the end of this year, they're going to release the 12th one of these. And so I'm on number five. So I'm not even halfway through the damn story. And it's insane how much there is. But because he died, they're saying they're going to finally release the last one in English. And the big question is, are they going to continue it moving forward? Because there's a lot of the story that's so like super tied to his personal life that was like allegories for stuff he was dealing with. And so people aren't sure, like, ah, should they continue it? Because he left, a, he left the story unfinished. Like, even though I'm not done yet, I kind of know where the story's going already. Just it's kind of been spoiled, which is fine. It's not a big deal. But um, that's like the big question of are they going to continue it? Like, even I, though they kind of I had a direction. I think cases, like, what was that? Uh, Wheel of Time? I never read it. Uh, but the mm -hmm. author, like, I think it's the last two or three books, gave, like, another author, like, the outlines and what. Yeah. Whatever. And they took, I think in those cases, it's fine. I think mm. it's a bit, it comes fan fiction if you didn't know where it was going to go. Exactly. And that, that's exactly what I was going to say. So it sounds like because after he died, of course, everyone was like, oh, what, I mean, what's going to happen with the story? They're going to continue it or whatever. And that's when, well, they already had one chapter that was about to be released. And so that's, you know, they released it. Uh, but then, yeah, the, the, his supporting team was basically saying, like, look, we would love to continue it, but it's just too soon for us to make a decision. But they kind of said that, like, yeah, they gave us some ideas and probably they could keep it going for a little bit. But to be honest, I don't think he was still anywhere close to finishing the, the true story. So they could probably do it to an extent. But yeah. And I think people will still read it. Like, I don't think people would just stop reading it. But it's very clear that, like, this is an end of an era for this story with him dying, unfortunately. So I'll see where it goes. I still have plenty to catch up on. Like I said, I still have like seven more of these just to catch up. So I'm going to be reading these for a while and I'm not anywhere close, but I would highly recommend. I mean, if you love manga, read it no matter what. But even if you're like, if you're not sure like where to get into to starting with manga and like, but you've always maybe thought you might want to do it. And you, but you're looking for something that's good and not just like your typical like Naruto or One Piece or you know kind of that type of shit. I would highly recommend Berserk because it is super fascinating. The art's incredible. It is brutal as hell. Um, yeah, it is not for kids. <laughs> I will say that for sure. <laughs> so highly, highly recommend. Two thumbs up. Um, oh, that two you thumbs like up. It. I would, I would give it definitely without question one of the best manga I have ever read. Uh, unfortunately, though, I will say there have been some anime adaptations of this, and apparently they're all pretty terrible. <laughs> so, and I don't know, and, and I haven't watched any of them, and I think there's been like mini series and, and a movie because there's so much material. Like, there's been different like arcs that have kind of been adapted, and I think all of them apparently have not done the greatest job. <laughs> so, I'm sure Netflix will get it right. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Yeah, they're going to turn into a rom-com. It'll be fine. Yeah. It'll be super easy. With so Alfonso definitely... uh, on your shirt. <laughs> <laughs> He's going to play the main character. I, I, yeah. I can see that. Yeah, that'll be yeah. fine. But, uh, but yes, definitely, definitely recommend. So, okay. What's that, all seven, right. eight thumbs up in total this episode? Not bad. There's a lot of thumbs going up, that's for sure. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, a lot of good stuff. Yeah. Um, so as I mentioned, you know, I'm already watching some other shows and I know you're watching some of them. So yeah. sneak peek at maybe some upcoming episodes, what might be coming up. <laughs> but uh, thanks as always, of course, uh, for everyone who's watching. Thanks for joining me today, uh, as always, as well. 
So for uh, anyone who isn't already, make sure to follow us on here on YouTube at Tojo Dojo, on Twitch, Twitter. Um, I think that's all we have for right now. Maybe Instagram, right, as well. Yeah. Maybe fa oh, Facebook, too. There we go. Uh, so find us on all, all those places. And uh, stay tuned uh, for what's going to be coming next. So until next time, see you later. Bye.